Hey there, it's Michael, and I just want to go through the training for rental minimum standards. So we're looking at uh, 25, so um, New Residential Tenancies Act, Operational Guidelines and Frequently Asked Questions. I'll open up this card, and um, you'll see it's probably, it's probably one of the more detailed cards. We've got a whole series of links to the Residential Tenancies Act, then we've got the regulations, and we also have some consumer affairs links. What I have is um, there's a number of attachments inside of here, which we'll go through in a moment. But let's firstly explain what are the minimum standards. And, and this is not necessarily going to, I'm not going to go into detail of each of the individual standards because there's other Trello cards for that. But this is more from a, um, a guideline to the reforms. Okay, so let's just kick off with what are the minimum standards. Under the new rental laws, rental providers or landlords must ensure that their rental property meets certain minimum standards. The minimum standards cover basic but important requirements relating to the amenity, safety, privacy, and the rental, minimum, and the rental providers have a duty to ensure that their property meets these standards. The standards only apply, and this is really important, to rental agreements that have been created post 29th of March 2021. So if there was a rental agreement that was entered into, it becomes periodic, and then in, after 29th of March 2021, it was renewed, then the property needs, needs to meet the minimum standards. If there was a new tenancy, a change of tenancy, a, a um, transfer of tenancy, a lease break, and a new lease, a new rental agreement has been created after the 29th of March, then the 14 minimum standards need to apply as well. So the property needs to meet the minimum standards prior to the, the uh, renter moving in. Rental providers must ensure that the property complies with minimum standards before a renter moves in. If a property does not comply with the minimum standards, the renter can terminate the rental agreement before they move in or request the, the, an urgent repair. So let's just use, for example, um, one of the minimum standards, uh, which is window furnishings. Let's just say the, the window furnishings are sheer and they're supposed to be full block out and they're sheer and you can see through them into the, into the bedroom. So the rent arrives on the, prop, on the day of the property. They look at the, uh, the window furnishings and they say, this doesn't comply. They contact the agency and if the agent or the rental provider doesn't want to repair the property bef as, a, as a part of the urgent repairs, if they don't want to repair it, then the, rental pro the renter can actually not move in and they can uh, end the lease without any penalty whatsoever. So that's really important to understand that. Um, or they can move in and then they can make a request for an urgent repair that the window furnishings are fixed. So this is the sort of thing that I'm talking about. Okay, so there's seven attachments here and the first two come through from the management authority. So the owner has actually agreed, the rental provider has agreed in their management authority to ensure that the property complies. So this is the REIV management authority and this is the inspection express management authority. Then what we've got here is some uh, guidelines. So uh, consumer affairs guidelines. I'm going to bring these across now. So the guideline one is maintenance. I'll bring that over here. And then guideline two is urgent repairs. So these are the attachments that are sitting there. Now these can be found easily on consumer affairs website or um, they're within the Trello board. So inside of here, so I've got information on, there are five, there's five of the guidelines and uh, really important, uh, all the property managers and um, uh, administration staff, leasing staff, BDMs, all need to be well aware of the rental minimum standards. Now, let's just use BDM for example. Minimum standards is really important when you're listing a property. So if you're listing or a property manager is listing a new property, it's very important to make sure that you're spending time with the rental providers and that they know what the minimum standards are and that the property complies before you take it to market. If it doesn't comply, then they need, then you need to fix it. Um, and uh, it's important that you don't list a property. It doesn't comply, you know that, and then uh, come back to the owner and say, oh, well, you need to fix these things. Okay, so we've got maintenance and urgent repairs. So come back through to here. Now, from a leasing point of view, you also want to make sure the property meets the rental minimum standards because you need to, well, you need to understand it 
to ensure that the property meets the minimum standards because you'll be the one creating the lease from a property manager's point of view. It's very important you understand that because you'll probably be the one discussing the repairs, rectification, remedial works um, with the rental provider. And obviously from a principal's point of view, you wanna make sure that the team are fully across this because if they're not and they're creating leases that uh, where a property doesn't comply and the renter moves into that property, you're exposing the agency to significant fines, not to mention uh, potential uh, uh, safety risks, but you're also from a, from a fine point of view for the owner and also for yourself. Okay, so the training video going through to here. Uh, we also have uh, the rental minimum standards for heating and we've got the uh, consumer affairs fact sheet and the reference guides that's attached there. So let's just go through, we've got the different sections that are sitting in here for you. Uh, we've got the Tenancies Act sections and we've got the regulations. There's a whole series of other um, relevant, very, very relevant uh, sections of legislation or guidelines. I'm not gonna open these up, but it's really important that you've got your head around this, particularly from a um, uh, electrical safety point of view, what the switchboards need to be, the wiring rules, um, all those sorts of things. Um, and then we've got the different building types, which we'll go through that, class one, class two. Um, and consumer affairs uh, links that are sitting in through to here now. So let's just come back through to the Tenancies Act. So 30D, information that residential rental providers must disclose before uh, entering a rental agreement. So let's just come back, I've opened them all up here for you. So we've got 30D and there's potential penalty units of 60 penalty units for the owner and potential penalty units for the agency, 300. It's about $55,000. So information that needs to be disclosed, section 30D. 30E, misleading or deceptive conduct. So again, if you've not disclosed, the same penalties inside of here. If you've not disclosed information, that's really important. Now we've got 65A, occupation of rented premises that do not comply with rental minimum standards. Without limiting 65A, 6570, uh, must in, the rental provider must ensure the rental premises comply with the minimum standards on or before the day in which the renter enters occupation. Uh, fine for that, 60 penalty units, about $11,000 for the owner and uh, 55,000 thereabouts for the agency. Um, so 65A, very important. 68B, residential rent provider must keep records of gas and electrical safety checks. And this is where I suggest that the agency manages this and keeps a record on file. So if the owner is doing their own gas and electrical safety checks, then as an agent, what you would want to do is have a copy of that on file to make sure they've actually got it because they're obligated here to uh, to keep that. 69. Um, Rental provider must ensure rating compliance for replacement appliances. Again, when you're putting in appliances, then they need to meet a certain level of um, uh, heat, gas, electric uh, standards, rating and efficiency standards. If they don't, then they can't be put in. Uh, locks, very important with regards to locks because that's one of the minimum standards, one of the 14. Urgent repairs. And again, as I said, if the, um, if the rental provider is uh, not wanting to repair something, the renter can actually make an application um, or request that an urgent repair is, is uh, completed and carried out. And if they don't want, if the rental provider says no, then the renter can apply to VCAT to have the uh, item rectified as a urgent repair. Now, termination by a renter before possession. And again, if they haven't moved in, they can actually um, see it says here, if the property does not meet minimum standards, so if they've gone to the property, they've got the keys, and they've arrived at the property, they've not moved in yet, and it doesn't meet, then um, then there is no penalty whatsoever um, for the renter. So it's not a break lease. And here are the um, uh, the regulations. So we're going to move into there now. The safety regulations. So here are the fourteen uh, repairs inside of here. We'll go through that in a second and rental minimum standards. Regulation 16, so this is what you need to include when you're looking at disclosure, and these are the regulations again, and 33, compliance with energy uh, efficiency. Now, let's just come back through to minimum standards, definition of minimum standards, 
uh, and here they are. I've numbered all of mine, so there's 14 of them, only because it makes it a little bit easier to uh, uh, reference them. And a standards guide, which we've actually incorporated, and the disclosure, which is 30D, 30E. This is what you need to disclose, and um, additional information for uh, rooming houses as well and uh, locks and security. Okay, so let's just come back to this one and we've now covered off the documents we've, we've included and we've also now covered off the um, all of the links that are sitting there for you. Very important that you're across that. So let's just come through, as I said, I won't labor on these, but uh, number one, door locks. Two is vermin-proof bins, toilets, pretty self-explanatory, bathroom facilities, kitchen facilities, um, uh, laundry, structural soundness. Now these are really important. I am of the of the opinion that the property manager or leasing is certainly able to do a visual inspection. You're not a builder, so you're not going out there and giving an assessment as to um, whether the property is uh, built correctly. But what you are looking for is signs of um, water ingress. So if you've got leaks, if you've got um, large cracking, then you should be intuitive enough to be able to then bring in a tradesperson, maybe an inspector, maybe a builder to come and have a look. And of course, you're calling the rental provider to be able to then say, well, maybe there's an issue here because there might be broken tiles or uh, whatever, the, whatever the issue is with regards to weather and structural soundness. Same with mold and damp. Uh, I often get uh, property managers say, well, you know, we're not builders, or, or principals say, we're not builders, we, we shouldn't be doing these inspections. What we're looking for is um, each room in the rental premises must be free from mold and damp caused or related uh, by the building structure. So what we're looking for is, it, you should be able to see quite clearly if there's mold or damp. And, and part of the disclosure statement is, if there's been an issue significant enough that it's impacted a tenancy, so there might be a report, there might be a, a situation where the tenant has, a previous tenant has left the property because of mold or dampness and um, that hasn't been rectified. So that needs to be fixed. Then you've got your electrical safety uh, regulations and your window coverings uh, came into effect 29th of March, 2021, actually, so 2022. Um, on, on 29th of March, 2023, all power outlets and lighting circuits in the rental premises need to be connected to circuit breakers. Um, so this is where a lot of properties are getting their switchboards upgraded. Um, window coverings last year, windows and window locks, uh, lighting, ventilation, and then of course your heating. Heating, there's a lot inside of the heating um, that came into effect on 29th of March 2021 until the 28th of March 2023. And then from 29th of March 2023, there's different heating levels that are required for class one and class two buildings. Now, um, I won't go into what they are right at the moment, but effectively you're looking at standalone properties versus um, uh, multi-unit dwellings. That's what we're really looking at. Um, and here are the summary points that impact the agency. So the Act requires the locks uh, that locks are provided to secure windows or they're into premises that are capable of having a lock. If the window is not capable of having a lock, it must have a latch to secure against external entry, fixed fixed heater in the living area, um, uh, energy efficient fixed heater, and uh, again, fixed heaters inside of there. What if the property doesn't meet the rental minimum standards? If the property, if the rental property does not meet the rental minimum standards, the renter can end the, tent, the agreement before they move in without penalty or they can request a, uh, an urgent repair. Uh, the definition of the different classes, so standalone buildings, class one, and uh, apartment buildings, or multi-level side-by-side up, up on top of each other is class two. And rooming houses, information for rooming houses inside of there, and there we have the penalties. So really, really important that you're across the rental minimum standards. Um, as I said, there is other cards throughout the Trello board that will be able to explain in more detail the, uh, and I've done training videos on those as well, what each of the standards are and how it applies. But for this one, just wanted to make sure you're aware of what the resources are. Thanks for that. Best of luck with it.